Lena, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for watching the film and also making time to talk to me. Uh, absolutely. So much tenderness is beautiful. It's a beautiful film. Mm -hmm. um, I really, uh, just even from the way it sort of unfolds before you, like the opening scenes itself just feel so authentic and and the film the builds in intensity as it goes on as well. It's just it's just a wonderful piece. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, I, we actually used one of your quotes in the trailer, so thank you. Oh, oh, I didn't even know that. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, where can we talk a little bit? Where did the story come from? Uh, I mean, sometimes I feel like for films, there's like a conscious sort of desire, and then there's something sort of unconscious. I mean, I've, I've been making films for for a little while. My first films were shot in Colombia, and I think that process was maybe unconsciously about going back to Colombia and finding ways to reconnect and and uh, there were like family dramas or center around mother and daughter um, and then my father-in-law who sadly passed away who's the father of my partner once said to me how come you don't make films in Canada what's wrong with Canada you're Canadian and, and I had become Canadian like I was born Colombian but through you know, a process of paperwork and lots of other things, I, I became Canadian, so I'm Colombian Canadian, and I was like, yeah, you're right. So I think I started thinking about Canada, and even if it seems obvious, like, yeah, just thinking about, like, being an immigrant and what it sort of feels like to be in multiple places at once, in a way, because I think, I mean, I think this is true for all of us, like, we all carry our past with us and it's and time is not really linear and it's not that the past is behind and the future is ahead like everything it's a little bit connected in a different way so um yeah I started thinking about Canada and my place in Canada or like how I relate to Canada and then I started talking to different like fellow Colombians some people who I knew some people who I didn't know and just just getting listening to different experiences of how people like different Colombians, not all of the Colombians, but different Colombians that I knew have entered uh, Canada. And through that process, I, yeah, I just got a sense that although we had very different experiences, of course, and ways of entering, uh, there was like two things that kind of we had in common. And one of them was, I mean, this is not true just of Colombia, unfortunately, but because Colombia has a very long and deep and sort of ongoing history of violence, violence was something that has permeated our lives. And even if we were not all direct victims of violence, it's something that has permeated our lives when we were there, when we were here. So this idea of carrying these sort of wounds coming from Colombia and what that means was something that we had in common. And the other thing was um, just this feeling of not feeling like we were like on solid ground, like this idea of feeling unsettled and you know in immigration sort of messaging it's always about settling immigrants but this idea like the impossibility of feel like you belong or like you are somewhere uh because you're always inside and outside because there's things that you connect to but some things that don't and of course it depends on the generation so all of these things i, I think uh yeah became sort of like my impetus to just try to think about like well what you know how do i deal with this, all of these things and 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 also in the Colombian context but in general I think for the immigrant experience the idea of reconciliation like how do we reconcile with the past how do we reconcile with, our, with ourselves and, and Colombia particularly started a, a peace process like years ago anyway it's, it's like I don't want to get into too much of it, but there, there is this idea of reconciliation on the table which I, I do think it's also a conversation that obviously it's important and current in Canada about how do we reconcile with the, with the past and the history of this land? What's happened here? So I think, yeah, I think just these ideas of like, who am I and where am I? Although they can be unique to immigrants, I think it's a question that we, you know, have to ask ourselves as people, but also as Canadians. You know, there's a number of things here that you said I want to unpack. I, I think it's phenomenal. Um, but I want to start with, with, like you said, the Canadian experience and being in, uh, especially rooted here in Toronto. Um, growing up, growing up here, we were always told Toronto is a multicultural community, mul most multicultural city in the world. But we really sense the the threat experienced by the people, uh, especially the those who have, are coming for the first time in this film. Like, I like that you said uns unsure footing 
because it just sort of, like, there's, there's something uneasy about almost every, every scene in, in a good way. Uh, as people, you have these, these worlds colliding. Um, and is that something like, I think you sort of have said this, but something that, that you experienced or that you heard from other people that you spoke to in developing the film? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, when I was talking to people, but also like, yeah, my own experience, although I don't seem to have that much of an accent anymore. And actually I was talking to my partner yesterday and we, I realized something very obvious. And I think one of the reasons I, why I probably have less of an accent is because of being with a Anglo uh, phone partner for so long. Well, I have friends who haven't. And I was, I was thinking like, what happened to me? What happened to me? Um, but nevertheless, like, I think it's this feeling of, uh, you know, I mean, I still have my entire, like, I build a new family, and I think that's one, it's one of the beautiful things about being an immigrant, you just find different ways of coming together with people, and it doesn't have to be by blood, and I think that's, you know, something that I think it's important that we think about, thinking about reconciliation, and just, like, not always just thinking about our own, so how can we actually build something with other people who are not our own, but, uh, yeah, I came here by myself, so I think still, like, even I've been here for a long time, I think just feeling, I mean, there's like simple things like, well, people asking you where you're from because they can't really quite picture where you're from, which is why that scene in the film where um, uh, Lucia's character gets asked, like, I mean, it's just, I think her and like so many people when that happened, we're just like, I just feel like that just happens to me still quite often. And it's not a mean question. It's just like this constant reminder of like, you're, you don't belong here in a way. And, uh, but other things like cultural references and I mean, I think the conversation for me, it's also about how, yeah, like how can we start thinking about being together where it's not just about um, like newcomers or new people fitting in something that exists. It's like, how can we actually be together? And, and as I said, I think it's a conversation that we're having because of being an indigenous land is like how can we actually learn from each other instead of imposing one way over another yeah yeah absolutely and I, that scene you're talking about it's funny because it's such a simple line i think it's aurora that gets asked that and you know i think it's just i noticed you have a little bit of an accent where are you from and and it's there's something about it that it's it, it it's uneasy it's sort of like well okay and and so you mentioning it there well, having said that, one of the things you, you mentioned earlier is the idea of creating a home. Um, what do you think it means to create a home wherever you are? Where, what, what does that mean to you? I mean, I think one of the, I, I love, by the way, what you say about uneasiness. I think that's, that's, it's beautiful that it comes across and that sometimes maybe it's gentle and other times maybe it's a little bit more, I don't know pronounced but that that kind of way of a sort of being there but just not feeling quite there and the uneasiness I think it's a beautiful way to uh, describe it so thank you um I don't know I mean it's interesting because I had the privilege of leaving Colombia because I wanted to and it's not a privilege that everyone has nevertheless I feel like when I was in Colombia you could say that maybe uh Colombia was my home, but there was something even then that I felt also uneasy about. There was like a lot of like codes about like, about, I mean, things are changing a little bit more, but like the codes of what it is to be a woman, what you have to look like, you know, like this kind of like over hypersexualized Latina image is not something that it's only uh, a stereotype outside. Like it's definitely something that is very strongly <laughs> pushed in Colombian society. So I felt a little bit outside. So although it is, it was my home I felt outside and I think what I would have realized over time and by having the privilege of leaving is that by leaving my home I was forced to rethink who I was and I was forced to rethink how I want to be in the world and I think it is through this reframing that I was forced to learn and unlearn and I think this process of learning and unlearning maybe is a more inter interesting space for me to think about how who I want to be and where I am instead of uh, maybe falling for this idea of nationhood or like being like, this is my home, my land, my people. So one of the, one of the beautiful opportunities that being an immigrant has given me is that. And I, so I think if I have a home, I mean, there's a word in Spanish that it's hard to translate, but I think maybe the, the, it's not love, but it's like, 
in Spanish you say afectos and it's like I would say like the territory that maybe it's mine it's a territory where I can find ways to connect to people like maybe that's my home it's like how can I find a way to be with other people and that and it's, it's through encountering other people that I feel perhaps more at home and I mean and cinema has given me that beautiful gift but it's about so it's less about where I am and it's about creating a space together so I think maybe that's the home that I'm interested in yeah you, you know it's interesting you say that because as I was preparing for this and reading up on the film one of the things that that jumped out at me is the idea of you including the cast in the character development process you know that there because one of the things that comes across very much to me is every scene feels very natural and the conversations don't feel forced they feel very authentic um and i was wondering you know what that you know talk about learning and unlearning what that process is like to you why it's so important to have people like Noel and Natalia help create those those characters with you. I mean, I think it also comes from like I mean, truly, my interest in filmmaking, which is a way of being together. So I think you know, I think to live in the world. I mean, I don't know. I have the I have the privilege again to be able to make films, and I think it's it's a gift because it's helped me find a place. Like that's the place that I feel comfortable in. But making films, you can either you know, then maybe replicate the the problematic industrial practices of like what it is to work together. So then he's like, I don't want to make a film that is going to oppress people or like abuse people just because I want to be a genius and make films. To me, the making of the film, me and my partner, Bradley, we really try to like, it's it's not perfect and it's complicated because it's like going on vacation with your family, right? It's like people come together, they love each other, then everybody hates each other. It's 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 emotional, but we really try to put a lot of care into what being together is. So making films as a as a way of being together. And sure, you make a film, but it's like being together, you can work together, you can build relationships together. And so so under that kind of impulse uh comes how do I want to work with people? And I'm not saying that it's collaborative in the sense, like there's other ways of making films where you would ask people and then everybody, like, so I, I would, I wouldn't say that this is a collaborative process where everybody decides what the story is going to be. Like I came with an idea, a framework, a script, but it is really important for me to give space to the people who I'm working with, just so that they feel seen, just so they feel like they have a place, just so they feel wanted and loved. And that implies just like talking. So for character development, I, I tr like since I was making my prior films, I do like a series of exercises, which is not terribly original. Like other people do that. And it's like working with actors and non-actors before. So I do this thing called like prehistory where I like, so in the case of Noel who interprets Aurora, like in prior opportunities, I would, um, offer the actor the opportunity to uh, pick their name and pick their profession. In this case, I really wanted Aurora to be named Aurora because Aurora means dawn in Spanish. And I really wanted her to be an environmental lawyer that was very important to the story. So she didn't have a choice with that, but how she was gonna incarnate and embody that character, I really wanted to get her input because it's her body. And in your body, even if you're, even if you're pretending to be someone else, when you, it's, it's for me, it's kind of like alchemy, you're like, summoning this other thing that is outside of you to go through you mm. so you still have to use your body you still have to use your experience you still have to use your history so I really try to invite people to bring that so there's like a lot of aspects of Aurora that come from Noel like the connection to plants uh, the way that their home was put together was very much in in, in you know communication with uh, Aurora Natalia Natalia who's the actor who interprets Lucia is a Colombian uh, immigrant who came here by herself. So just bringing a lot of that experience, uh, it's really important for me. So it's so it's not about my fantasy coming true, which I think it's a, it's been a sort of like perhaps a more sort of patriarchal tradition of like filmmaking where the director has to be pleased and everybody does things for the director. And then for, this is more like, I see myself more as a witch where, um, so which I'm not the genius, but I am the one who summons the space. So it is through the connection of people that something can happen. But it's not my it's not my genius alone. Like you need you need people and you need people to be there so things can connect. And I don't have control over the connection completely. It's not about control, but it's about creating a space. I love that because I'm always talking about I love that like it's important for me creating safe spaces, third spaces, places where people can can feel comfortable, but 
what you're saying is 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 more than just feeling comfortable it's it's being present and being and i love that i think that's phenomenal i mean uh, presence is one of i mean it's difficult and i think it comes from listening it's i mean it's it's difficult <laughs> it's difficult we listen to each other very little and uh and i think i mean this is perhaps it's related to the film because it's very much something that we like I care about the film, but I, we really care about how we make the film and I think this idea of extractivism where. If my job is to come and take everything from you, whether you want it or not, like I don't want you to give me anything you don't want to give, first of all, and second I don't want to take your stuff to put it in my film, so I, I, just, I just i'm just not interested in that, even if it's going to whatever so I think. It is a human process, and I think it's about being together. So I, I can't make films and behave like a mining company. It just makes no sense to me. So I have, so like, so it's really important to think about how we work. And you know, one of the most beautiful things that Noel said to me when we finished shooting the film, she said, you know, I was almost always waiting for us to start to start working because it didn't feel like work. And I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can sense that on screen. Is it? you can always tell or i'm sorry you can't always tell but you oftentimes you can tell when an actor uh is feeling like they are bringing someone else's vision and you can sense here that there's very much a sense that they're allowed to bring themselves into it and i think that's that's part of the beauty of the film i think so i mean maybe i'm too much of a romantic but i do think that the the aura I sorry around the camera drips into the film I, I I think so I think you feel that and I think look it's not perfect but I think putting care and love at the center of a creative process I mean because you're never creating something from zero like I'm not an inventor like you're always creating something from something and so you so you need people's like presence to to do something yeah absolutely absolutely I I know we're we're starting to run out of time uh, Lena, but I just thought, you know, as we're starting to wrap up here, you mentioned before about bringing the past with you, and certainly that comes up in the face with the film, literally and metaphorically. Um, I'm just wondering from your perspective, how do you bring those two worlds together? And, and is it a matter of breaking free, or is there some, some something else that needs to take place? Well, I think the idea of reconciliation is something that I was thinking about in the film, and it's like, so what, like, what do we do? I mean, I think I speak as a Colombian, you know, as someone who has been affected and permeated by like a history of violence. Like, what do you do? What do you do with this that you carry? What do you do with those wounds? Like, how do you heal? And one of the things that I love about the word tenderness in, in English, because actually I could not find a way to say it in Spanish, is the first time that I have a title in English first. But the word tenderness to me means, uh, sure, people always think about softness and it does have a softness to it, but it also speaks when you go to the doctor and if you if you hurt yourself, the doctor would say, does that feel tender? And to me, tender means th that you're in pain, but you're not like, it's not a pain that it's like sharp, it's a pain that you carry with you. And I think there's something about recognizing, I don't know, like what you have, uh, facing yourself and trying to move forward but I don't know if moving forward it's forgetting I think it's about it's about living together and I think it is about bringing the past with us because I, I don't think you can you can escape it but it's about uh, yeah like maybe facing yourself uh, maybe trying to build with other people and but you can never reinvent something to be new like it's always connected to work to where we come from so yeah, I think uh, maybe that, I think maybe the idea of reconciliation has a lot to do with, as you were saying, the time, like how do we reconcile the past and the present, but also how do we reconcile that we have these experiences in other places and now we're here. So it's, I think it's accepting the coexistence of multiple emotional and geographical spaces, but also I think it's being open to learn and unlearn. Yeah. I love that. I really appreciate it. Lena, the yeah, film. Uh, maybe before I know that Bonnie, uh, we need to go, but a quick thing that I was going to say, I really tried to do that as you beautifully uh, sensed it in the film through sound. Uh, so there's a lot, there's, there's a sound journey in the film that has Colombia only present through sound and maybe people who don't know Bogota wouldn't know, but there's something, I was trying to create a, like an uneasy feeling sometimes where you hear something that doesn't quite belong to what you're seeing. So it takes you out but you're not completely out. It's like you're in this limbo. So this idea of being suspended was really important for me in terms of um, the past and the present. 
honestly, it's a wonderful film, and and that absolutely comes through. Thank you so much for your time, Lena. I wish you the best. Thank you so much. Have so much fun in your paradise, uh, in your personal paradise. You. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> And thank you so much for your time and for just like your beautiful writing that you already did on the film and just, uh, yeah, for taking time again to talk to me. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks. Hopefully we cross paths again. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.